Good. This hangout is on the air live. Uh, okay, so that's good news number one. Uh, Weekend Geekdom is on the air. Sí, el puertorriqueño. <laughs> and they're already starting. Let's see. I look reasonably clear on YouTube. Nice. Not only did I restart my router, I restart. I hit the fuse box. I restarted all the electricity in my house. I rebuilt my house. I tore it down. I rebuilt it from scratch. So we should have a good show today. And I'm starting a new internet provider tomorrow. There we go. So we've got tomorrow night's show. We'll be with a new internet provider. This is Omni Bros Live. I'm uh oh, what was that? I'm Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. And joining me on a Sunday, as usual, is Luis from Comics Guide 101. How are you hey. doing, Luis, buddy? Hey, everybody. I'm ready to be the most hated man on the internet. Let's you do it. Are, you are hardly going to be that. And <laughs> the most positive guy I've ever met, Gio from A Week in Geekdom. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, I... I... I have some things to say about that movie, but we'll get to that. I'm doing great. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let me, I have some news. Let me Google. Uh, let's see. Tomatoes policy change. Rotten tomatoes. We got some stuff to talk about. Today. Policy well, Jess, change. Well, Jess looks up some things. So today we're going to be covering... The biggest thing I think we're going to be covering today is our review of uh, Captain Marvel. We're going to give that closer to the end of the show. We're yeah. going to have a spoiler section and a non-spoiler section for those right. of you that still haven't seen the film. Um, brand and new. We're also, yeah, brand new. Yep. Uh, so we're also going to be covering the weekend box office, specifically just Captain Marvel, because I think that's going to be interesting because we've been talking about it for the past few weeks, what we thought it was going to hit, what we thought it wouldn't hit. Uh, we're, cover we're covering the new Shazam trailer, Shazam reactions that are out, uh, and a few other things along in the docket. So we've got kind of a full show today. We're probably going to go a little bit longer than normal, I suspect, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem for a lot of you guys. But the first thing we have to cover is the fact that I can wear this crypto shirt for the first time in 15 years because I've lost 15, I've lost 30 pounds. My man. Look at that. The beauty of crypto on my flat stomach and you know what else is important because I couldn't afford this crypto shirt if it wasn't for the stipend from instocktrades.com there you nice. go there you go where you could get your collected editions up to 50% off loyalty discounts for those of you loyal to instocktrades.com bring you an extra Two percent. That's right. Omni Bros Live discount codes every quarter. If you're in the United States, that gets you extra percentages off every quarter. Did I just say that? Mm -hmm. If you're in the United yep. States, you get free shipping if you order fifty dollars or more. I got into a cadence and it screwed me up. I was trying to be dramatic. <laughs> I screwed myself. Sorry. Okay. Fabulous customer service. She's got a great sense of humor. She and Cameron came up with Raw Shark as <laughs> their code. Those of you yeah. in the chat know that's Omar trying to pronounce Rorschach. <laughs> that Emily and Cameron came up with the Raw Shark as the code that is on sale <laughs> right now to get you 3% off everything in the store except certain things that whatever they have a little asterisk on. But I think that's pretty gosh darn funny that they came up with Raw Shark. And she even discussed fucking Nemo with me, but they decided against it. And they have fabulous packaging. But that sense of humor, that cracks me up. InStockTrades.com, the fact that they would even talk about fucking Nemo is pretty darn funny. That is funny. Uh, so we love InStockTrades.com, and I think they dig us, too. I think so, too. I think so. They could have done freaking Nemo. Freaking Nemo, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they still might. 
that's an option. Um, I think Lane Wayne is probably a strong second oh. choice. Oh, I agree. I, I think that I think um, we've got a definite potential there <laughs> on on that one for Lane Wayne. <laughs> Lane Wayne. <laughs> Uh, ETL, thank you. Where is Jess? He looks so much smaller. Thank you. That's right. I turned sideways. You can barely see me. I'm disappearing. Nice. Thank you, ETL. Um, so let's see. Uh, what do we want to cover first, guys? Do we have, uh, have we had a good week in the uh, world of comics? Is have we enjoyed what we've read? Have we enjoyed what we bought? Have we enjoyed geeky geeking out? Uh, there was a lot of solicitations posted there in was. the group. There was. Are you guys going to be covering that tomorrow? The solicitations? Uh, not necessarily. We usually just cover previews. We cover hauls, reads, and previews for following day so solicitations would generally th that would be news that we'd cover today no well i mean i think the most notable thing out of that was uh we're finally getting that batman omnibus right mm -hmm. the scott snyder one yeah the one we've been talking about for years that why haven't they done that yeah we're finally getting that now are you in the floor of the bathroom i'm in the floor of the bedroom because the, oh. the, the my bedroom sucks because i usually have my desk is on <clears throat> in the bedroom but the problem is the outlets in my bedroom, they all, for some reason, whenever I try to plug anything into it, whatever I plug in, it just pops right back out. So something's up with the outlets. There's only one good outlet in my bedroom, and it happens to be right next to my door. Uh, well, this is actually the clearest picture we've ever gotten of you. That's probably because I have a daylight in the bedroom. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, so we can cover solicitations. So yeah, we got the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, New Fifty Two, Batman, Omni, one through thirty three issues. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, that would be uh, Court of Owls, uh, Death in the Family, and uh, Death of the Family. Sorry, and uh, Zero Year. Yeah, so Zero Year. Okay, long awaited. This should have been day one. <laughs> Ago. 10 years ago <laughs> yeah yep. this, this is this should have been in fact i was under the impression they were going to wait for snyder to finish up his uh his run on batman completely with capullo which that's coming up soon it's called last night and then they were going to start putting that stuff out but i guess they couldn't wait now has batman eternal omnibus has that been canceled and resolicited or is it still go is it still going I to be published it, i think it's still canceled I oh, might it's be still wrong. canceled yeah that's too bad i was actually looking forward to that i'm one of the few people that enjoyed that that's a good run i, I really like that story yeah i did too i was like scott snyder weekly i dig it mm -hmm. was he able to keep up the weekly uh, grind because that's tough for some writers man he, yeah. he had a couple of people working on it yeah oh we did yeah it was uh james tinney on uh, Snyder and somebody else and a bunch of different artists too because I remember uh, Jeff Johns has said that for 52 when they did that a few years ago they said it was a bitch and they hated doing it by the end of it they they couldn't wait to be finished with the whole fucking thing yeah ETL brings up a good point you all know DC had to get out of the Red Hood and Deathstroke new 52 before Snyder's <laughs> Batman <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an odd choice to get those out before uh, Snyder's yeah. Batman. I, I really want to know who in DC editorial said, you know what the kids like? They love that new 52 Red Hood. Yeah. Yeah, they're all talking about it down at the Peach Pit. <laughs> the Peach Pit. <laughs> um, so, darn it. So if Batman Eternal is still canceled. That bums me up. Yeah, I think you and Gio are like the... I don't remember too many people even praising that too much. <laughs> just me and Geo? I think it might just be you and Geo, man. Oh, man. It's fun. I liked it. Uh, yeah, it, it was fun. Plus, it introduced, and uh, spoil, uh, I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything. It introduces a character that was not so old back into the, uh, at the time, the New 52 stuff. So that was pretty cool. If you've read it, you know who I'm talking about. 
Yeah. Well, you can. Go, I mean, go ahead and say who it was. It's okay. It's not I can like spoil it's a- it. Okay, don't get me no dislikes. Uh, <laughs> it was a uh, friggin' uh, hush. Hush comes back in the New Fifty Two stuff via that storyline. God damn it, Geo. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, to this day, I still get shit from people online for a video where I said, where you should start with Spider-Man? And I was like, oh, if you want to start with Miles Morales, start with the story of Death of Peter Parker, where Peter Parker fucking dies. And people yeah. get pissed at me. It's called the Death <laughs> of Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get into Miles Morales, you have to understand that he's in it because Spider-Man is no more. Yeah. So. It's been out for <laughs> it's been out since like 2012. That's like seven years ago. I still mm-hmm. get people mad at me for that shit. Um, do we have any more important solicitations that came out of there, or was that arguably the biggest one? Um, oh, you got another one. Hold on, let me uh, look for it. See. Aquaman, sort of Atlantis, book one. How could you forget that? Oh <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and and here's what gets me like they canceled uh peter david's aquaman volume three yeah and they solicit aquaman sword of atlantis which is arguably one of the worst aquaman stories of all time who wrote that i, don't know. I think it was either uh Busick or somebody else huh. let me check i don't even remember that story it's when it's after uh, it's right before um, oh Jesus uh, brightest day and all that stuff, and there's like two yeah uh, it's two different Aquaman uh, characters. It, 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 it's not that great. If you like the character and you want to complete the whole run, then you might want to get it, but I, I don't recommend it. Huh. It, was, it was Kurt Busiek. Yeah, thank you. It, it's after Infinite Crisis. <laughs> I don't know. Speaking of Aqua, bro, have you seen it yet? Did you see the 4K I sent you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. How I was good does that to, look? It looks gorgeous. I, I cannot wait to see it again on physical media, but the digital 4K looks impressive as hell. I love yeah, it. Yes. It looks beautiful, man. I can't I, wait to get the 4K disc. Yeah. I fell in love with that movie all yeah. over again. So <laughs> I was gushing last yeah. night. I think I'm going to watch this week Umbrella Academy. You need to. Nice. Uh, it's a choice between that and Deadly Class, and I want to see something that I can see all of it. And what, there's like 10 episodes? Umbrella Academy? Yeah, there's tons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, have you heard of this um, British uh, haunted house? show there's six episodes called requiem no i haven't heard of that (laughs) i'll send you a link to an article on it it's supposed to be better than the haunted haunting of hell house or whatever it is what was that show that you like so much uh haunting on hill house yeah it's supposed to be even better than that it's six episodes it's british and it's supposed to be really really good so I may even watch that this week. I, I'm on my, I'm on an I'm on a up phase, so I may be able to watch some television. And I'm gonna try and get in Requiem and uh, that other thing, Umbrella Academy, <laughs> that I just said two seconds ago. So kind of uh, just moving on. Can we go in and talk about the box office? Because I really want to talk about this. Yeah, sure. We both said 120. We said 120, I think, to like 125 or 130 million. Uh, Gio, what did you say this? you thought that uh, old Captain Marvel would make? Uh, 160. You said think, 160? Yeah, I Gio think, shot yeah. high. Wow. Gio shot high, and he was actually the closest. This, this one even surprised me. Uh, Captain Marvel over the weekend box office, the numbers are still technically coming in, but they're saying at this point it's pretty solid has pulled in over 153 million Whoa. in the US. So way farther than I way I was uh, way off on my prediction. And you know, tracking with stuff like this is always unpredictable. Films underperform or overperform all the time. Uh, Glass is a perfect example of that where they thought it was going to make 70 million, but then it ended up making 40 million. So stuff like this happens all the time. Um, 
worldwide, it made four hundred fifty-five million. Wow! Opening weekend, so very impressive. Very impressive for uh, for a, a film that was kind of lukewarm among critics. Um, and it, it's actually the first solo-led female superhero flick to earn four hundred fifty-five million because it's also Marvel's first solo-led female film as well. So I don't know why the hell they put that in there. To, okay, that doesn't matter. What Electra wasn't a solo female film, but Marvel proper. Oh, 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 oh! Yeah, Marvel Universe. I proper. see what you're saying. I see. What yeah, you're saying. yeah. Okay. Uh, by comparison's sake, it actually dwarfed Warner Brothers' uh, Wonder Woman, which Wonder Woman opened up to a hundred and five million. I want to say hundred and seven million. Um, but Wonder Woman ended up being a box office burner, and it lasted weeks and weeks and weeks, and it earned. Over its run, a shit ton of money. I think it was somewhere in the eight hundred millions. I think we talked about it, Geo, a few days yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it, it ended up landing somewhere in the eight hundred millions. So, uh, without a doubt, this is already profitable. Profitable for Marvel. I'm more curious if this is going to have lasting legs, and we'll kind of get into that uh, when we start giving our reviews and stuff like that. What I will say is that I'm super happy that a lot of the internet assholes uh, were shut up. Yeah, a lot of this. But the whole boycott campaign was fucking stupid from the beginning because it's a film. It doesn't matter what the reviews were going to be. It was going to do well. does not matter because it was after Infinity War leading into Endgame. So Marvel was really smart as far as placement of this thing. Um, you know who else is really smart? Who's really smart? Nathan Burkholz. He says, Jess, you're looking slim. Thank you, Nathan. What a nice guy. I appreciate that. Nice. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> okay, let's get back to uh, the placement of Captain Marvel. The, they were they were really intelligent on this as far as the uh, as far as where to place this because my gut feeling is that any anywhere else other than the spot that they have placed it right now, this probably would have made less yeah. than what it made. It was perfectly placed. That is a really good point. Because it fits right in between two huge movies that are anticipating. And again, we're going to get into it in, in the spoiler section, but it has small connections into, uh, into uh, Endgame. That's going to lead into that. So people were really curious because, oh, you know, I got to watch this because Endgame's coming out and they're going to introduce this character. And da, da 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 so I don't want to be out of the loop. So people went out and watched it. Um, but I'm, I'm real. I want to, I want to see if this is going to have legs. If this is actually going to end up breaking the billion dollar mark, or if this is going to end up really having lasting appeal. Uh, because in my theater, it, it, yeah. Well, in, in the theater that I was into, it didn't seem like the audience that I was with was too crazy about the film but we're going to get into that as well later um but yeah great great start for captain marvel we'll see if it holds up over the next few weeks i'm going to keep track of it because i'm a fucking nerd like this and i'm curious to see where this is going to land i think as of right now this is going to have it's not going to be too big of a drop off next week but then the following week after that you have jordan peele's follow-up us which oh. early reactions are yeah early reactions of that are coming out and that is going to be fucking huge for an R-rated horror film because they're I saying gotta that this see is, that I gotta yeah. see Get Out. Still. You have to see Get Out. They're saying that this is Jordan Peele's next horror masterpiece. Like there, people have been saying, this is on the level of like The Shining with how good this is. So I am oh. really excited, and I I think if there's any film that's gonna knock Captain Marvel off the top, it's probably gonna be that. And Hellboy. No. When, when's <laughs> when's Hellboy come out? Uh, no, no, April. Never, because it doesn't exist. <laughs> uh oh, he's going flat Earth with it. Um, is it, is Endgame coming out in um, April? Mm -hmm. Yeah, April twenty sixth. I want to say. And what was the last Marvel movie released before this? It was it was Infinity War. That was the last Marvel movie that released. Ant Man and the Wasp. No, 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 Ant Man and the Wasp. You're right. You're right. You're right. Ant Man right. and the Wasp. Okay. And that, was, that was what July, June. Mm -hmm. July. Okay. I liked Ant Man and the Wasp. Did you? 
I did. I enjoyed it. I really did too. I Ooh. really enjoyed it. I really okay. liked it a lot. I'm indifferent towards it. You know, what, rewatching Aquaman, man. That that because like, I got the digital code. Because uh, if you do Voodoo, you can have like the service where they uh, give you the digital code and then they eat, they mail you the disc later on for certain films. And I was doing that for Voodoo. Fuck, I really loved Aquaman. <laughs> like, I like it more every single time I watch it. Really? I know it had mixed reviews with critics, but this is one of those where I disagree with them, and I'm like, this is a fun fucking movie. It's a bit too long for me, but it's a fun movie, man. It hits all the high notes of a classic superhero movie. You have that swashbuckling adventure. Kids get, can get into it with the visuals and... You, you even had freaking Volko riding a hammerhead shark. You had Popo <laughs> playing the drums. You had, yeah. I mean, one of my favorite scenes is when uh, Orm is explaining to uh, Black Manta how his technology is supposed to work. And then you see him constructing the Manta suit with the eye lasers. I geeked out hard, man. I'm like... <laughs> I, like watching it again yesterday, I'm like, that's freaking Black Manta. It's like I'm reading a comic book come to life. And that's what I want to see when it comes to these movies. And, and Aquaman's special because he isn't a Batman or a Captain America or heroes that have such a long history of uh, you know representation in different media where people are exposed to them. This is the first time that a lot of people are... Uh, witnessing all this stuff and the character yeah it embraces its campy roots but it, it that doesn't mean it has to be bad because it has cheesy elements or whatever I think that's part of the charm and what made it a, a, a bit more memorable compared to other films that we're going to talk about later right right um, and Aquaman went on to gross over a billion dollars in the box office which I found out this week I was like holy mm -hmm. shit it is a lot of fucking money Here's the crazy thing. It's DC's highest grossing superhero movie of all time. Yep. Yes, that's, it was. That's because it was fun and well done and charming. Mm -hmm. And it had heart. Well written. Well paced. Um, well acted. It actually had a story. You could it follow it. It made sense. It was really good. I still My favorite is still Wonder Woman, though. As far as... Yeah. Like, I still I, I loved Wonder Woman. I yeah, knew. I loved Wonder Woman too, especially mm -hmm. that little kid. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. So go ahead. Kind of uh, just moving on a little bit, because we're kind of running a little bit longer. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Um were we going to talk Early, about the Shazam trailer? I was just about to talk about Shazam. Excellent. My boy, I can't wait for this fucking movie, man. It looks so much fun, man. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. I am so happy they nailed the character of Shazam. Uh, the, the new trailer just came out. What did you guys think? I, I loved it. I have watched it a couple times simply because it's so funny. I, I, I like the idea of this uh, Superman meets big type story. Yeah. And for audiences to get something really different, like this is on purpose funny, and it's it's going to be more family oriented. And I, I can't wait to see what the public thinks of uh, uh, the big red cheese. Yeah, yeah, the big red cheese. What do you think of uh, the trailer, Jess? Um, I I loved how tongue in cheek it is. I loved how. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, from Ch uh, from Chuck. Uh, Zach Levi. Yeah. Um, I I just loved how I just loved how tongue in cheek it was. How how he just goes up and says, "I'll I'll have some of your finest beer, please." And <laughs> but she just points him to the beer section, and he ends up with the you know the huge thing. Uh, just like Gio said, it's Superman meets big and he, he's got the huge armload of junk food and knocks the bus over and saves the bus and, and he caused it he caused because it. he caused it. And he's like, yeah, but I, yeah, but I saved it after I caused it. And I don't know. It, I just got a huge kick out of it. It seems yeah. like it's got 
I, here I go using the same word again. It's got a lot of heart. It seems yeah. like it's going to be really fun. Um, and I, uh, I read a lot of Captain Marvel as a kid. I, let, I read a lot of uh, reprints and I read a lot of Shazam, but I did not recognize. Uh, is that supposed to be Dr. Savannah? Um, mm -hmm. I don't. Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, okay. So that's the, that's the, the that, new 52 that's the bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, all right. Good. I'm glad they didn't go with Mr. Mind then. <laughs> they're a the worm. <laughs> they're the worm. <laughs> hey, uh, that little worm is an asshole in Kingdom Come. <laughs> um, yeah, it just looked fun. And I think that I had to explain to my movie buddy. Well, actually, we went to Alamo uh, Cinema um where they actually before the shazam trailer they had a whole tutorial on the uh, who captain marvel was originally whose marvel captain marvel was and how shazam came about which mm -hmm. i thought was really good um and so sh she now knows who shazam is and captain marvel is and everything um so I didn't have to uh, explain it like I thought I was going to have to. And she's looking forward to Shazam now. Yeah. Um, I did have to explain a couple of Cree scroll things to her in Captain Marvel. Um, and when we get into the review of Captain Marvel, I'll tell you a couple other things I had to explain. And she's seen all the Marvel movies with me. Um, I'll have to... I'll have to think about what else I had to explain because she was, I think it impacted her enjoyment of the movie. The fact that I had to explain these things to her afterwards. Yeah. Um, but she's seen all the movies with me. So I was, I was kind of bummed out that I had to explain those things to her. Um, but we had awesome donuts right beforehand. So that was good. <laughs> at Duck Donuts, where you made your own, do they made your own donuts for you. That sounds amazing. That sounds oh, they good. were unbelievable. That sounds really good. Yeah. Uh, I love the trailer. I, I can't fucking wait to see this film. Um, yeah. We actually started getting early reactions uh, from a lot of reviewers that have already seen the screen, uh, seen the film. And it's always a great sign when a movie studio allows reactions to come out in this case, a month ahead of the film coming out. It shows they have a lot of confidence in this and that they really believe in it. Uh, which again, that's something I'm going <clears> to <throat> relate to later on when we talk about Captain Marvel and how the marketing played into that. But uh, I, I can't wait for this film. The early reactions are they're saying it's the best DC film that they have done so far that it's, uh, basically, like everybody was saying, that it's big meets Superman, and the action's great, and everything is great, but the real thing about it is that it has a lot of heart, and at the crux of it, and at the center of it, it's a story about family, and it's a story about an orphan, and him discovering his family. I I am super excited about this, because this could have been a character they could have easily dropped the ball on, and really messed him up. Didn't, didn't we, we, like, the general nerd community kind of collectively grown when the we first saw zach Le, Le, levi levy levi yeah, yeah. uh there, there was a lot of at first and, and it his costume looked right. really fake and he looked fake and we were right. all going oh man yeah there was a lot of negative buzz at first surrounding this which that's that's always something that you don't ever judge it by a still don't ever judge a film by a still image can we can we please move past that Judging yeah. a film by a still image by a shitty camera that somebody took that shouldn't have taken it. And there was a whole thing because all oh, the suit looks fake, the, the muscles look padded, da da, da 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 And I'm just like, just wait. Just wait for the actual trailers to come out. Just wait for the film to come out because people were saying the same shit about Heath Ledger in Dark Knight when that first. Oh, that's uh, right. You remember that? The first yeah. one of the images that were coming out, they were really blurry. It was really ugly. And people were like, Oh, he doesn't have the bleached skin. Like the makeup looks hair terrible. It looks like a chick I picked up when drunk night when I was having a bad night. You know, it's it that was, was just your reaction. I, I, <laughs> let's move past that point. Um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, and it's it, it's a horrible way of judging a film. It really is the same thing. Last two years ago, we had the same fucking reaction when the first image was released of Pennywise. Do you guys remember that image of Pennywise where he was popping his head out of the sewer and oh, yeah. weekly release? It was terrible. It was a horrible image. And then that movie came out and everybody was like, holy shit, this is the new Pennywise. Well, we had the same reaction with uh, uh, what's her name from Titans. Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't seen Titans. So. I haven't seen it either, but it's supposed to be actually fairly decent. I've heard from people who are generally uh, pretty critical of things. <clears throat> I haven't seen I need to give Titans a shot. I'm even I'm still not crazy about the look they gave Starfire. Uh, but then again, I have to watch it. So that's, I can, wait, I that's who I'm talking about, right? Starfire with the it's purple Starfire. hair. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not crazy about what I saw, but you know, I have to. I have to really give it a shot to, for me to actually fairly judge it. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the Ash Croson says Shazam was damn near perfect in my book. My favorite DC movie uh, by far. Pure of incredible. Pure of heart, incredibly funny, full of fun jokes and references, and just like a bunch of stuff like this. Sean Gerber, it's a, a Shazam is a pure joy that would have been right at home in the Amblin era, which, yay. It has huge heart, loads of laughs, and even a, wel a few welcome scares. Wait, just are these people that have seen the movie already? These are people that have seen the movie and they're reviewers. So they, they are not allowed to give their full review out until closer to the film, but they can give their reactions to the film on Twitter. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. So these are legit reviews of film critics that have already seen the film. Wow. Yeah, so it's getting really positive word of mouth and really big buzz early on. Uh, Peter Scaretta, who is actually one of my favorite reviewers, he works at Slash Film. Shazam is parts home alone, parts big, a crowd-pleasing, family-friendly joy filled with wish fulfillment superhero film, which gets which gets a bit over the top and cheesy at times. It's fun and funny, and I was surprised by how much it wears its heart on its sleeve. I'm in. I I cannot wait for this. <clears throat> I can't either. I it, the trailer looked great. It just looked like a saying it again it looked fun. That's all I want from a movie is for it to be fun. Just just. Be fun and take me away for two hours. That's all I care about, you know? It's yeah. Not much. So it seems like DC is DC has finally figured it out. They seem to have really started to hit their stride with, uh, with Aquaman, now Shazam, and they had Wonder Woman. And it really seems like DC is stronger with their mm. single superhero films rather there, mm -hmm. than their... Uh, group efforts and maybe that's a route that they're going to be taking where a few years from now they'll revisit the justice league idea but for now they're just going to be focusing on single hero films because that seems to be really working for them mm -hmm. um isn't that kind of, uh this seems like a uh it happened so long ago i guess iron man was in 2008 but yeah didn't didn't marvel release single hero movies and then avengers came out I mean, we had like Iron Man, Thor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that Marvel. Captain America, and then Avengers came out. Yeah, Marvel was really smart because, um, and a lot of this is owed to Kevin Feige and his production company and uh -huh. Marvel production. Um, Marvel and Iron Man came out in 2008, were hedging their bets on Hulk being their huge box office burn builder and that's where they were going to kick off their mcu proper they did not expect iron man to be as big of a hit as it was they were expecting the hulk to be their big hit because iron man at the time people forget was a b-list villain he b-list villain was a b-list hero right and yeah he was involved in, in civil war he had a big part in that and all that other stuff but for the most modern day audiences they're like iron man who like really who's iron man um but people knew the hulk they didn't anticipate that Robert Downey Jr. would knock it out of the park and that they would have a huge multi-billion dollar hit, a uh, multi-million dollar hit with uh, with Iron Man. And also, you know, they they, they were smart uh, because Robert Downey Jr. back then, he's huge now, but he was a burnout back then. Mm -hmm. He resurrected his career. He 
it resurrected his career. Who was the uh, director for Iron Man? Geo it was the same guy that did Lion, is doing Lion King. Yeah, um, John Favreau. John Favreau. Mm -hmm. John Favreau had to fight with Marvel to cast Robert Downey Jr. They, he had to fight them because at the time, Robert Downey Jr. was known as being very troublesome. He had a history of alcohol. He had a history of prostitution. He had a really bad history of drugs. Um, and it, it was jail for drugs. Huh? Are we talking Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah. He, yeah, he, he actually very, went to jail for drugs. Yes, he did. He did go a few years for, uh, to jail for drugs. Yeah. And so it was it was a gamble. And they weren't really sold on it. And, and you know, but John Favreau was like, no, this is Tony Stark. This is the guy we need for Tony Stark. And it ended up being the best choice that Marvel could make. Yeah. Uh, and then they, you know, they kept making solo films. And eventually all their work for Avengers was basically laid out for them throughout those films. That way when uh what's his name uh he did buffy i'm blank i'm kind of blank. Whedon. that way when whedon came into avengers the groundwork was set for him so he could just jump right into the story he wanted to tell and that's that's kind of where i think dc failed in that they wanted to rush into that team movie but the groundwork really wasn't there now we're starting to see okay Let's do Wonder Woman. Let's do Aquaman. Uh, let's do a Batman movie with Matt Reeves, who directed Planet of the the Planet of the the last two Planet of the Apes films. Which Lord knows whenever that's coming out at this point. I think they said twenty twenty one, something like that. Twenty twenty two. Um. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy that DC is finally in the ball game, and we're getting some great films out of them, man. Uh, Warner Brothers and DC has. Uh, six movies in, you know, uh, post production and all that stuff. Currently, mm -hmm. yeah. Got, uh, Shazam, which is coming out next month. Mm -hmm. uh, then next year it's uh, Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. Then it's uh, the Batman movie and Aquaman. Oh, and uh, Suicide Squad. Two. Yeah, James Gunn. Oh my God, I can't wait for that. Who? Yeah. Apparently, they, there's rumors, or it's pretty much concrete, that Idris Elba is going to be taking Deadshot. Which is awesome. Yeah, that's I, I think be it's a fantastic choice. That is such mm -hmm. an upgrade, in my opinion. Oh, my God. I can't. I, I, it is. I lo <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love Will Smith. Yeah. But I do, there's too. Been, there's been a history of when Will Smith attaches himself to a project, the writers have to go into the script room, and they have to rework the script so he's not a complete villain. And that's probably what ended up happening with Deadshot. It happened with Hancock. Um, because if you look, you can find the original script for Hancock online. And that movie was much darker than what we got. It was fucking dark at the end of, Han of the original script of Hancock before uh, Will Smith attached himself to it. Oh. So, Idris Elba. Idris Elba, huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's dude. Me. You get a chance. To, you could find the original script online. It is a much darker film. Ooh. And I actually like the original script more. Um, but Idris Elba is dead shot. Holy shit. I can't wait. Yeah. I hope, I hope they can add in uh, Bronze Tiger. That's a character I want to see in a movie. <laughs> D Idris Elba is headshot. <laughs> headshot. Headshot. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have anybody, anything else that we – are we missing anything that we were going to cover before we start diving into this? Um, let's see. Oh, I did. I, I think we can, this counts as a, a lead into our news story. Uh, the Rotten Tomatoes policy change. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, well, let's see. You can't offer an opinion. I remember blah, 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 blah. in the world of film criticism, there's one invaluable rule. You can't offer an opinion on a movie you haven't seen. But on Rotten Tomatoes, the review aggregating website that wields serious influence over many theater goers, that rule was broken all the time until last week. Any site user could leave a review and rating for a Jess, relax. And rating for a film before its release date, something that would affect the movie's audience score, although not the official critical score that determines whether a film is labeled fresh or rotten. Then on February 25th, Rotten Tomatoes announced a series of changes, the most significant of which is that fans can only rate or review a movie once it's come out. 
This might sound like the most logical. This is from the Atlantic.com, by the way. This might sound like the most logical sort of adjustment. Why would people even need the opportunity to weigh in on something that hasn't been screened to anyone except critics? But this is the internet in 2019 where any benign pop culture topic is a potential powder keg for online discourse. Mm -hmm. Rotten Tomatoes' decision proved to be just that. The announcement came less than two weeks before the highly anticipated March 8th release of Captain Marvel, the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to center on a female superhero, played by Brie Larson. In response, an angry segment of super mo superhero movie fandom claimed that the site's changes amounted to censorship, but Rotten Tomatoes is just trying to stem the tide of organized campaigns against movies. Captain Marvel hasn't hit theaters, yet it garnered a dismal audience score of 54%, far below the totals for other recent Marvel movies. The poor grade is the result of review bombing, a practice yeah. that's also widespread in the highly charged world of video gaming. Different groups organize campaigns to drag down the audience rating for a film or a game in response to a particular controversy, sometimes for sexist or racist reasons. Many culture writers noted that Captain Marvel in particular was likely being targeted for featuring a female hero. It's become common to see online backlashes to female-led blockbusters, most notorious, notoriously with the 2016 iteration of Ghostbusters, but also with films such as Ocean's 8, and even projects that never exited development. In the case of Captain Marvel, many online commenters seemed upset by Larson's forthright remarks and in interviews about how she hopes to increase diversity in the blockbuster world. Uh, yada, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Certainly there was legitimate debate among fans involving Last Jedi's character storylines, but it was the unhappy review bombing, which I didn't know it had a name. That's very interesting. The new Rotten Tomatoes changes, of course, apply to unreleased movies. In addition to yada, yada, yada. So they changed. What are we hearing? Omar is driving. What? I dropped and say hi. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm taking my daughters to go see Captain Marvel. Oh, know, nice, that nice. That movie sucked. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, let's see. The Rotten Tomatoes change makes perfect sense, uh, but it likely won't quash review bombing campaigns which can simply move to other online platforms such as YouTube, Reddit, and Twitter, at least until the movie is released. Then site users, including those who haven't seen a film, will be able to rate and comment as usual. So they've changed their policy in order to try and stop review bombing, which I didn't know that was the name of it, but I think that is very interesting, and I'm glad they uh, didn't... I'm glad they did that, and that leads us into the non-spoiler part of Captain Marvel. And right. oh, Do Omar's my... uh, sideways. Hey, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> What's I... if... Oh, there you are. Do you mind if I chime in real quick? Okay. Yeah. No. Go right ahead. Whoa. Say what you'd like to do. All right. I'm not. I'm going to preface this by saying. I think we are all in agreement that in the comments section, we don't mind disagreement. We don't mind criticism. We don't mind that stuff. But if it gets nasty, we're going to start and not shutting down comments. We're going to start like enforcing, you know, deleting comments or whatever, whatever, whatever. Cause there's, there's a, a line between having a disagreement with somebody, having an open dis discussion with somebody, which I think we're going to see in a few minutes here. And then there's a line where it's just, oh, you're an asshole SJW or something like that. There's a line between that. Um, having said that, I'm kind of curious if you guys just want to give it a score right off the bat, and then we just go from there. Would you be cool with that? Sure, I'm fine with anything. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do like a round table uh, real quick. Because um, I, I cannot really get into my discussion of the film without really starting to spoil it. Uh, Gio, what did you think? 
uh, spoiler free, I thought it wasn't as bad as some of the hate uh, haters made it out to be. It, there are some fun parts. It's a mishmash of ideas we've already seen in previous movies. It didn't really have its own identity per se, uh, visually speaking. Uh, yeah. Some of the characters are great. I love, I love, love, love the scrolls. I love the idea of being a, a prequel movie, sort of, and having that buddy cop drama between Carol and, and Nick. I actually enjoyed uh, uh, Brie Larson as Carol Danvers because I, I, I liked the character a lot and I wanted to see that happen. And it wasn't as terrible as the internet was making it out to be. The film does have a ton of problems that I don't like, but for the most part, it's a perfectly fine movie. It should have been better. Uh, it, this felt like a phase one movie where it should have been, you know, it's 2019. I think we could have done something a little bit fancier, but uh, overall it's a fun movie. I, I, I had fun. It's serviceable. It works. I don't know. 6.5 out of 10 for me. 6.5, uh-huh. Okay. Um, do, do you want to go... Uh, Happy hate or not? I mean, Omar. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with uh, Gio. There were a lot of issues with it. I think we needed something better. We're 21 movies in. Um, I think it needed to be. I, I, you know, I reviewed it on my channel with Amanda and Maddie, and uh, they liked it more than I did. But um, I gave it a seven out of ten. I think he could have used a more stylistic look to stand out above all the other movies. Like, we needed more than just a phase one movie, right? At this point. And more than a, just a stepping stone in between movies, between uh, Avengers and uh, the Infinity War and the Endgame. So, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't really like her as Captain Marvel. I thought she was dull, but within the movie, like, it makes sense why she's acting that way, I guess. But I'm, I'm excited to see her mesh with the other Avengers, because that's what kind of movies I enjoy, when all the when all the characters are together. You split them apart, then it becomes like Arrested Development Season 4. It's not that fun. <laughs> when they come together, it's when I really enjoy those movies. But anyway, that's my take. I'm going to take these little ones to go see it and see what they think. So, you gentlemen have a good day. Try not to get so many dislikes, okay, guys? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Y'all be good. Uh, Jess, what did you think? All right, buddy. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, there we go. Why are we hearing an ambulance? Did we get into an accident? <laughs> you can hear that? Okay. Uh, no, no, it's just a siren from a uh, okay. some dude on the street. Don't worry about it. Okay. Complicated. Um, I let's see. We're keeping this is. This is the non-spoiler part of it. I uh, felt that the movie was well paced. Okay. Um, it it grabbed my attention from the beginning and kept it all the way through beginning, middle, and end. Uh, so I was interested in her as a character. Uh, I was interested in the setup. Uh, let's see, how can I say it without, um, I was interested in her memories, in her, in her current setup and in her memories that kept coming back, uh, and where her memories were going to take her. Uh, I found myself very interested in a relationship with, uh, Nick Fury. I, I think Nick Fury has become the connective tissue that holds the entire Marvel universe together. He's, um, uh, I, I think he is just so great. And the way they de-aged him and, you know, made him so 90s was uh, nothing short of remarkable. Um, I, 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 um, I, I did feel she, I didn't. I didn't think she had as much charm as she could have. 
I did. I understood that she needed to have a bit of a bit more gravitas attached to her, so she could. So she did have to be um, a bit more. So she had to come off as uh, a little. She couldn't be cutesy. She couldn't. She couldn't be jokey, uh, joking around. She she had she needed to be uh, a little tougher than um, you know like Mary Jane and Spider Man or something. She had to be a badass pilot. She had to be tough, and so that didn't leave a lot of room for her to be uh, an emotional joke telling goofball that people probably wanted her to be. Um, so she did have to be a bit of a one note kind of person that people wouldn't object to if she were a man. Um, I, I think if she were a man playing this role, like a Clint Eastwood playing this role as uh, an, a, an emotionless badass, they probably would have judged him differently. But because it was a woman um, playing the role of the badass pilot with uh, the memory issues she was trying to deal with, I think they judged her uh, a little differently. Okay. So that's just my feeling on that kind of way that people were saying she was emotionless. Um, I, I found that my absolute, uh, I, uh, I enjoyed the uh, scrawl aspect a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, I enjoyed the cat a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, the um, uh, the they they nailed the nineties, which I thought was great. Um, I uh, <laughs> somebody compared the nineties computer to my computer, which I thought was hilarious in the omnibus group. <laughs> Um, so I felt that it entertained me a lot. I, I left that movie feeling it was a solid 8.0 that now I want everybody out there that said, Oh, it sucked. It was a 6.0. It was meh. It was a 5.0. It was a big steaming turd. Remember that movies are art and are subjective. You're going to see it the way you want to see it. If it was a 6.0, it was a 6.0 to you. That's, That's fine. Fair. That's fair. I was highly entertained by this movie. I liked it from beginning to end. It kept my attention. I enjoyed all the little, uh, all the little uh, touches in it a lot. And I give it an 8.0. Um, I enjoyed it. I left that movie feeling better about the movie than I did Infinity War. That's fair. Uh, uh, you want me to go? You're the last one, home pizza. Okay. Okay, so, you know, I, I kind of joked around about it a few weeks leading up to this, that I, I think the movie's going to suck, that, uh, you know, I, I joked around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to preface everything that I'm going to say by saying that I never want to go into a movie seeing a bad film i never do i don't think anybody does i don't think anybody wants to spend their hard-earned cash to go see a shitty movie uh that being said for me this movie has a lot of problems um from a story standpoint to a script standpoint to a casting standpoint i think this has some really glaring plot holes that uh, I do think certain a lot of people are overlooking based on the significance of who the character is and what the character represents to a lot of people. And I do think she is, again, my opinion, I do think that the movie is getting a bit of a pass based on that stuff. I'm not saying that you did Jess or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying a lot of, a lot of people. Um, uh -huh. My score, without actually getting into the actual deep, deep dive of the review, is uh, I'm giving this a 4.5. 4.5? Wow. And I, I, will, I will explain why. Because it did the cardinal sin 
that I fucking hate in movies where it bored me. It absolutely bored me. If mm. I'm checking my watch in a movie to see how long I'm in it and I want to get out, that is the cardinal sin for you. you can be a bad movie and that's fine. You know, if you're a bad movie, it is what it is. You could be a good movie. Um, but it bored me because it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. There were no surprises for me in it. And it, it's for me, it, it, it boils right down to this script level that this felt for me, like it had some really glaring issues at the mm. most basic script level in terms of how it was constructed in terms of how everything was put together and how everything tied into the greater MCU. I really, really, you know what? I, I wanted to go into this just because it's been so much fucking hate online for this character. And I really wanted to dig this and like it a lot more than I did. And it just, it did not do it with, for me. A 4.5. What? It, 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 my, my cardinal sin for yeah. every movie is you can be a bad movie and that is perfectly fine. You could be a great movie and that's fine. But if you bore me to tears, then then oh, I, yeah. I, I, I hate it. And I'm wow. being generous. I'm being generous with the 4.5. <laughs> wow. You looked at your watch. I didn't... Uh... I mean, I got food all over myself because I couldn't, I couldn't tear my eyes away from the screen, and I was eating my burger, uh, looking at him, and I'm like dripping mustard all over my shirt. I couldn't even look down at my plate because I wanted to keep my eyes on the screen so much. I that just shows how different people are and how subjective yeah. things are. I, I, went I, to don't see dis I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I, went, I went to see this with my girl, and there was one point where I leaned my head on the shoulder of my girl, and she's like, are you okay? And I'm just like, I, yeah. And I, I look over, and I go, I don't think Brie Larson is that good in this. And she looks at me and goes, I agree with you. And she's much more forgiving with films than I am. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> Harsh, but you know, that's that's how it is. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you do like it. But I completely understand and agree with a lot of what you're saying. Yeah, so. we're not gonna. We're certainly not gonna argue with it because your point of view is your point of view. Um, I knew I knew I was gonna be on the low end of this. I expected it, but I, guys, I really I went into it. Yeah, I've been joking the past few weeks, you know, but. For a movie to be exactly beat for beat what I thought it was going to be, and for it to just bore me to tears, it, it's my cardinal sin against films. Yeah, I've had, I've seen movies. I remember. Do you ever remember the movie Species? Yeah, I like Species. Yeah. I didn't love it. I thought it was okay. That was a good movie. I looked at my watch probably thirteen times in that movie, and I got out yeah. of it, and I thought. That's two hours of my life I'll never get back. I was angry at that movie when I went to that movie. That's uh, so I know exactly how you feel about Captain Marvels. I felt that way about Species. So, yeah. Uh, you guys want to actually get into the spoilers? Uh, first, I want to talk to Worlds and in Ink. Yes, we get burgers at the Alamo chain. Uh, you get food and milkshakes, and they even serve beer, wine, and uh, hard liquor. I don't drink, but so if I wanted to, I could get lit up like a Christmas tree, um, although they'll kick your ass out in two seconds if you talk during the film. They have a really strict policy, but uh, yeah, they have all kinds of food, and they bring it to you, and it's really good, and unfortunately, they, unfortunately, they were sold out of the pint glasses and pins online, so I didn't get to get any at the Alamo. I was quite bummed, but my I have quite a collection already of pint glasses from Alamo, so my wife is probably happy about that, <laughs> that I didn't add to it. I mean, <laughs> I got an Aquaman glass, and she's like, when are you gonna stop? Uh, and I was like, uh, never? As long as they keep bringing out Alamo glasses, I just want to keep collecting them. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Yeah, man. That's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, 
All right. Okay. So, spoilers in this bitch. If you haven't seen it or if you just don't care, uh, uh, let's we should we should put it in the uh, chat that we're gonna spoil the hell out of it now. All right. Uh, uh, at the somebody... whatever mark we are now in the um, chat. Okay. Uh, what is what timestamp is this? I don't even know. Uh, Eric Whitehurst. Uh, no, this is not my favorite movie. This is not even my favorite Marvel movie. I just really <laughs> liked it. I just liked it. It's not my favorite. Um, uh, one of my favorite Marvel movies recently was Spider-Man Homecoming. I will say that. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. Love you, Rob. Have a good day, buddy. Thanks, Rob, for watching. Uh, okay, so spoilers. All right. Minute uh, mark? Is that where we are? 60 minute mark, yeah, in the 60 minutes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Are we, you want me to type that in? Yeah. How did you guys feel overall about the film that we can actually Spoilers. really talk about? Spoiler warning. Uh, the movie. I'm sorry. How do we feel about what? How did you guys feel? Now that we can actually freely talk about it. How did you guys feel overall about the film and what did you think like with the changes with the scrolls, with the changes of Marvel and everything that they did? Uh, I can start if you, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, like part of the appeal of what I like about Marvel comics is reading one, it's, it's reading Spider-Man, but other than Spider-Man, it's about cosmic, storylines. I love the Marvel cosmic side. And one of the things that I have been waiting for ever since this movie was announced, I remember San Diego Comic-Con 2000 whatever and they showed the first concept art of uh of Captain Marvel and she was fighting off the scrolls. I got immediately like like huge nerd boner right there cuz I love the idea of expanding uh the cosmos not just having the Guardians of the Galaxy deal with one or two alien species because, you know, they were limited with the rights issue. Now you can play with the scrolls and that opens a buttload of opportunities in the cinematic uh, universe, if you will. And I feel the movie had this golden opportunity to expand on that. And it, to me, it dropped the ball. Uh, you're starting the movie in uh, the Cree homeworld. We barely get to see it. And I don't think a lot of people really under, well, you understood the basis of like Kree are fighting against the scrolls. They're both of them are huge asshole species and, and why they're fighting. I think they could have expanded a little bit more on that. I, I, I kind of wanted to see more of that mm -hmm. and the whole uh, opening act with them infiltrating uh, the, uh, uh, I forgot the name of the planet, but they're infiltrating the planet and they're looking for the spy or, or the informant or whatever. I wanted to see more of that, actually. Uh, what we mm. got was great. And, and by the way, one of the best aspects, I don't know if it, was, it was, if it was just me, but the sound design for the movie was really good. I, mm. I love the, the, the sound mixing and the editing of it uh, from uh, the uh, explosions and the noises and all that stuff i thought it was superb but uh, aside from that the movie uh it was a little bit weird because it, it didn't deliver on that part instead it gave us sort of like the cliff note versions and then we're back on earth with a the amnesiac storyline i guess it's a different origin story if you will uh, i didn't necessarily care for it uh, I didn't mind that Carol was so stoic because at the beginning of the movie we're getting uh, uh, we're getting told that uh, you have to hide your emotions and the Kree are uh, soldiers first and foremost and they're a warrior clan if you will. So I understand that Carol being uh, I think I think it was like six or seven years in space and being such a serious character and coming from a military background. I got it that she is uh, serious, mm -hmm. but then uh, Brie Larson gets a couple lines in where it's very, it sounds a little bit hokey or the delivery is very uh, flat uh, compared to, uh, I forgot the character, uh, the actor that played uh, Talos, 
uh, where he was all over the place with his emotions and the line deliveries and all that stuff, or with Sam Jackson. Ben and Mendelsohn? Ben, ben Mendelsohn, yeah. Thank you. A at some point, I kept thinking, man, like the supporting cast has... Uh, is outshining the main lead. They're putting out really cool material with their line delivery. Yeah. And Brie, for me, Brie, she looked great as Carol. She's a beautiful actress, but most of the time I'm like, ah, that was either hokey, cheesy, or just plain yeah. eh. But for the most part, the attitude, I got it. And I didn't, and I was so upset with people saying, oh, she needs to smile more. It, Bitch, no. Like uh, the character is fine, and she's doing her thing. Like, you know, I don't need a hero smiling twenty four seven. And from what I remember of modern day Carol, she's not a cheery, bubbly character. Like she's serious. She can crack a joke, but most of the time, I see her serious in in comics. So I, I thought that was weird, and it upset me that people would resort to just kind of sexist tantrums about uh, yeah. a female uh, how a female should look in a film it's supposed to be how a character acts and not how you know whatever that's a topic for another day yeah. but overall uh, it, the movie just fluctuated fluctuated sorry uh, several parts i did like especially with the cosmic stuff it could have been expanded a little bit more uh carol i thought uh for the most part she looked the part and i loved her costume so much that's one of my favorite comic book costumes and seeing the Carol Mohawk and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, what was the other thing I wanted to say? I don't know. The, the flirting yeah. was awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 even, even I can't hate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Anytime you can get an animal to work in a comic book, it's superb. Like, I, yeah. wanna, I could easily see a pet Avengers movie. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a goose. Give me a lockjaw. Uh, um, yes, all please. the other animals. Just, uh, yeah, Cosmo, Rocket, and, and do a movie about them. I'll, I'll watch it. But, uh, yeah, you guys go ahead. I'll come back to some other points later. Well, I, I, one thing I will say is that Ben Mendelsohn is an awesome, fabulous actor. Uh, he is one of the stronger points. He, yeah, he is an amazing actor. He was in... Uh, Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman, the Churchill movie. And he's been in some other things that my wife and I have seen. And he is, uh, he's an Australian actor, so he's not as well known as some other actors. And to get him to play a Skrull is a coup for Marvel. I mean, he, he is a remarkable actor. And he, uh, he brought, uh, solid credentials to that role. I really liked seeing him in that role. Um, I I see this is what didn't work for you, Gio, really worked for me because I don't have the knowledge that you do of Cosmic Marvel. Yeah. So the fact that the, the, the Skrulls um, ended up uh, uh, needing to be uh, uh, not being the bad guys, mean, just being refugees, just trying to escape the Kree and was a wonderful twist to me because I, I have very, I mean, I have basic knowledge of the Kree scroll war and secret invasion and things like that. So I knew what a twist it was. And so I thought it was a great twist and it was enough for me to see uh, uh, I loved how they messed with Carol's mind that Jude Law stuck it in there, that it was um, a scroll initially that was shooting Marvell and her and that she was bleeding blue blood to make her think that she was a Cree. Um, I, I loved all the mind manipulation that had gone on with her and how she started pulling her uh, memory back. Um, uh, uh, the humor in it, there wasn't a lot of humor in it, but, but the humor in it did, um, uh, was mostly with, um, on earth with the, with the scrolls in the farmhouse. Um, I, I, I really appreciated it. And of course, Samuel Jackson, just, I can't say enough about him, how he's the glue that holds the Marvel universe together. Um, 
I, I guess I'm, <coughs> I think I've said this before and I think I'm a, a much simpler guy than you and Omar. Um, uh, and, um, and Luis, I don't see these plot holes and mm -hmm. I don't see, I mean, like Superman versus Batman. Yeah. I, I saw the problems with that movie. Um, Justice League I had fun with, but it was too choppy and I, it never really came together for me. Um, uh, other movies I've seen suck, but, but, uh, I don't think I'm enough of a film student like you guys are, um, like, uh, like you and Luis and and uh, and Omar seem to be real students of film, where you see these plot holes and you see these story chunks that are missing, and you're like, and and I just don't see them. So I think that I I I don't want to say I'm simple, but I think I'm easier to please when it comes to movies. Um. Uh. So I I don't know I I. That that might be why I enjoyed this movie more is I'm just mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not super critical of some things. I you know I was on the phone with Omar yesterday and we were talking about it and I think one of the things is is I'm still looking at it. I'm a lot older than you guys are and I'm still looking at it from a little kid perspective. Um, that I'm just happy as hell to have anything. Because when I was a little kid, I know this is a first world problem, but when I was a first little kid, I had nothing to, for, as far as entertainment. I mean, I had George, I had George Reeves Superman, where you could see the wires, and we had little green little people crawling out of the ground as, as mole men from the ground, you know, and Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane, and I, and we had cartoons like uh, Space Ghost, and that was. I mean, I had nothing, and I'm. I know it sounds like I walked 20 miles to school in the snow in my bare feet, but I really grew up on nothing. So when I get a movie now that's like Captain Marvel, <laughs> and it holds my attention, it's like, it's like, whoa! I there's a superhero movie in my lifetime that is really awesome, and it's halfway interesting, and so I. I don't know. I think I'm still a little kid in that I, and I don't see these flaws that you guys do. I, it's not on purpose. I think I just don't see them. And I'm, I, I'm just uh, easily entertained. I think. That's fair. No, that's totally fair, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay. Uh, I guess uh, I'll go up right now. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> All right, where do I start with this? All right, let's start with the good. Start with the stuff that I like, then we'll move on to the other stuff. God damn, Marvel. The the face technology you guys have is fucking incredible. Holy shit. Sam Jackson looks like he was in the 90s, and I was looking for the seams of this. I was looking to see maybe it's like it popped. Maybe, you know, it's not exactly... It is fucking spot on. We yeah. are there. Like we are there where we can take Sam Jackson and make him look like he did in the nineties. I, like, I have to give him that at least. Straight out of pulp fiction. It's yeah, it is <laughs> like the negotiator. Yeah. Um, that's an old movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is incredible just how far we've come with technology and how we are able to make Sam Jackson, who's a guy in his what is he pushing out close to 70? who's a guy pushing close to 70 if he's not 70 already and make him look almost 30 years younger and make it really, really believable. More Sam Jackson than Clark Gregg. There were a few scenes with Clark Gregg who plays Agent Coulson where I was like, eh, it doesn't quite look right. But they nailed that. Like I can't take that away from them. They absolutely nailed that. Um, Sam Jackson, Goose, and... Ben Mendelssohn, Mendelssohn, I think it was. Mendelssohn, uh, yeah. He, they are far and away, far and away, a much, I, for me, they are far and away better 
characters than Brie Larson and Captain Marvel. They were more interesting throughout that whole film, I thought, than the than the main character proper. Um, and I'm going to get into that again in a few minutes. I like Ben Mendelsohn as the leader of that small group of scrolls. I did think that he was a bit all over the place emotionally, like Gio had mentioned, where at the beginning of the movie he was more serious, and then towards the end of the movie he was seemed like he was it was all over the place. He was a little bit more laid back, and he was a little bit more calm, and he was more jokey, and that really didn't work with me. Um, Goose. Goose was awesome. Yeah. I love Goose. <laughs> I love the way they use Goose in the film. I thought it was really, really cool. And I really, really dug that. And I, I want to see more of Goose in the MCU. Okay. I got some good shit out of the way. All right. Let's get to the negative. <laughs> okay. You have oh. to say coughing up the the uh, the uh, Tesseract hairball was awesome, though. Okay. No. So let's put some of the things that Brie Larson has said over the past few weeks and put them in this tiny little box. And we're going to dump that box in the ocean. Let's take that away. I and me and Joe were talking about this before the movie came out. We thought Brie Larson was miscast for this movie. And I am still now more than ever. I think she is completely miscast for this character. Mm. I don't think she, she does not invoke in me the, the minds, the, when I see Tony Stark, I see Robert Downey Jr. When we say Thor, I see Chris Hemsworth. When we say Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch, they have nailed – Chris Evans is Captain America to a lot of people. They have nailed the casting down, I think, for every single one of these characters until it comes down to Brie Larson. What is I she lacking? What is she lacking that the others have? I, I just I don't believe it. I don't believe in in her as Captain Marvel. I don't believe in the performance she gave. And yes, yeah, some of it could be chalked up to, and this also goes down to a scripting level. Some of this could be chopped up to the whole she didn't have emotions or she was fighting emotions throughout the whole thing. But even when they started to introduce her as having emotions, it, a lot of it just fell flat for me. It it really it just it did not work for me. And I think I would have rather have seen somebody like. Um, who was the one that you we talked about a few weeks ago, Gio? Um, that you thought Emily would have been, huh? Emily Blunt. I could have seen a Katie Sackhoff or Emily Blunt absolutely nailing this character and absolutely making me believe that they are Captain Marvel. You got you guys have to remember this is the linchpin going forward in the Marvel Universe proper. This is what they want to hedge their bets around and build their Marvel Universe proper. Kevin Feige has said as much. They want this to be their new Captain America where they can build things around it. And I, I, I don't see it. I, I'm sorry. I don't see it. And I don't see Brie Larson and this particular character in Captain Marvel being that character based on this film alone. Now, can things change? Absolutely. We have Endgame coming up next month. Can the Russo brothers completely turn it around for me? 100%. I, I believe that somebody of the quality of the Russo brothers could make this character more interesting to me and could make her actually me, could make me believe that she would be the linchpin that the Marvel universe would follow proper. My next issue show don't tell show. Don't tell is a, one of the first things they teach you when you start making movies in film school, it's a visual medium. We've heard Carol is the most powerful being in the MCU universe. I saw nothing in this film that actually proved that to me. Okay, so she blew up a few ships, you know, the, okay, I didn't care. She blew up a few ships, that was cute, that was nice. Thor took a dying star to the fucking chest. <laughs> <laughs> in the last film, Thor took a star to the chest and lived. They, there was nothing in this film, she's got her cute little laser blaster, okay, whatever. There was nothing in this film that proved to me that she is the most powerful being in the MCU. There wasn't anything. They're really weird going based on the fact that Kevin Feige says, oh yeah, she's the most powerful being in the MCU. They didn't show me that. They didn't make me believe she's the most powerful being in the MCU. I didn't see anything. As far as I know, Doctor Strange is more powerful than her. That, that and the thing is, okay. On top of that, 
I knew where every single beat in this story was going to go. And that's why I was bored. I was like, okay, this is what's going to happen here. This is what's going to happen here. The scrolls, they're either going, I, I could have seen that twist coming. I saw it from a mile away. I'm like, okay, this is way too simple. So it's obviously that the scrolls are refugees. Da, da, da. That's going to be an analog for people coming from over from overseas, trying to get into this country and all this other stuff. It was way too, they did not surprise me once. And it, it bored me. It absolutely 100% bored me to tears throughout this whole thing. Why does it have I, to be a why does it have to be a political statement about what's happening now? There have been refugees throughout history. Well it, I'm just using it as kind of an an example. But it's All just right. because it's really it's really a hot button issue in the news right now, especially now. All right. You know what I didn't like about the scrolls? Uh, is that if you read the and I get it, movies are different from comic books. I completely understand and I like that. But I was really excited because uh, Talos, or Talos, whatever you want to, however you want to say it, is a, a scroll in the comics that can't shapeshift. Uh, so he compensates uh, becoming like this ultra badass, he's super strong, he's got like a cybernetic eye and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, I don't believe it for a second that the scrolls are good guys. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. I like my scrolls being bad guys, and if it's just Halos being a good guy and, and it's just his uh, crew, that's fine. But I didn't like that twist whatsoever. I, I want to see a secret invasion, and hopefully, here's a cool idea. When you introduce the Fantastic Four, maybe you can have Talos become your Super Scroll, so audiences will relate to him. Uh, maybe I don't know, but uh, the whole oh we're now we're now the good guys because uh, the Kree are so evil. But then T uh, Talos himself says it's a war. We've done horrible things too. So I don't I didn't want to be like oh yeah the group of scrolls they're they're the good guys i don't know that's this just is where my lack of marvel knowledge helped me enjoy the movie more <laughs> well no i mean in any war there's there's good and bad like yeah not everybody in germany during the during the events of the holocaust were siding with the nazis you know yeah. it, 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 there's good and bad people and i think and i kind of liked that a little bit where it's like oh okay well they're not all bad now if we're gonna, it's gonna become a problem if it's just that the Kree are just enslaving the scrolls a hundred percent, and none of the none of the Kree or, none of the scrolls are bad or anything like that. Because then, how are you gonna do the Kree scroll war and all this other stuff? And as a prequel film, it does the thing where, well, it's a prequel film, so we're gonna show you how this happened, and we're gonna show you how this happened, and then there's this, and then there's that, and then there's this, and then there's that, and we're gonna just basically leave no room for mystery and no room for error as to how that stuff happened. Did we really need to see the cat scratch Nick Fury's eye and then figure that out? I, I didn't like, I didn't care for that. I'm sorry. I, I like that. I, I, I loved uh, Telos's reaction to that. <laughs> it was cute. I liked it. It was fun. But then you have like a super serious movie like Winter Soldier where Fury's this badass and he's telling like uh, uh, he's telling everybody, like uh, I lost an eye because the last person I uh, trusted, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, betrayed me and all that stuff. And now you see this movie. I'm like, oh, great! It's a comedic uh, explanation yeah. with the cat, the uh, flarkin, scratching your eye out. Whatever, I'll ignore it. I guess it's a flarkin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it, you know, it is a fucking cat. Is Emily Blunt, was she in The Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, she's so good. Yep. That's yeah. one of my favorite movies, that movie. God, that was a good movie. <laughs> now that yeah, movie I, I loved. And, and the, the tricky thing is with a film and when you have the MCU together is that you have to be really careful with your timeline and you have to be really careful with what mm. it introduces when you do a prequel and how that messes up with the films that are set further in that timeline. We start getting into the issues with this film where why didn't Fury use that space beeper to contact Captain Marvel during the first Avengers film when there was a fucking meteor, when there's a hole the size of Manhattan opening up over the city that should have been something that, hmm, 
maybe Fury should have called Captain Marvel in for something like this, you know? And then you have to start, and because of that, you kind of have to start going back and retconning things where it's like, well, maybe you have to do, basically you have to do mind retcons. Where basic, where maybe, well, the beeper, he used it, but it didn't work, or maybe she was busy, or maybe he, she didn't have signal when she was wherever she was, or you, you have to start doing mental gymnastics to justify certain actions, and I hate that about this. Now, uh, let's, we could even do the same thing with Captain America during the first movie. Now, where was the Tesseract at the end of uh, the first Captain America movie? Was it at the bottom of the ocean? Uh, I don't Star remember. Where did it end up at? It's right Star here, Star. dude. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me light this thing up. I think uh, Howard Stark got it at the end. They Howard Stark it. got it, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that how it was? Okay. Well, then how did, Jude, how did Talos get it? How did, how, okay, how did the scrolls get it? It was in the uh, lunchbox. From uh, Marvel. From Har but how did he get it from Howard Stark? How did she get it from Howard Stark, I should say? I have no idea. I'm gonna. You're, make really, you're really picky. <laughs> no, no, it's it's stuff that it does bother me because that's that stuff starts meddling with this timeline and everything that they have set up and established before. Check it uh, out. Cool. I have the tesseract now. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I own it. I don't know what it does, but it fits inside a lunchbox. <laughs> Here it is. Uh. Um. So there's that. Did how did you guys feel about the "I'm just a girl" scene? I expected that thing to happen from day I one. Fucking hated it. Just a I, girl I, scene. I, the, the one where you hear "No doubts," I'm just no a girl doubt. playing. Where it's supposed to be like this big moment for her to shine and like, oh wow, she's really cut loose and introduce her power. I fucking oh. hated it. I <laughs> hated that scene. It's supposed to be this big moment where. Oh, she's you know coming into her powers. She's really coming into her own. She's finally let loose, and they c undercut it by playing "I'm Just a Girl" from No Doubt. Yeah, I don't like that song. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't. I'm not a fan of the song. I didn't mind them using something like that. This power. They should have used Toto's Africa. There you go. That would have made it better. <laughs> so there's that. Um, oh. Now I'm just running down the stuff that I didn't like at this point. Um, God, is it, did you have a binder? No, 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 no. It's it's just it's basic. It's basic. This is script level stuff. <laughs> that moment that she first gets her the colors, the proper colors and the proper suit um, that that is iconic: the red, the yellow, the blue, and all that stuff. That should have been a moment. And what I'm talking about is take Wonder Woman for example, which I think is far. <laughs> far superior than this this thing um mm -hmm. we don't really get a good look of wonder woman in the wonder woman armor until that scene where she is in that area of no man's land and that scene is fucking bad ass and she owns that scene because you see her coming up and it's like gunfires all over the place and then it's it's just the scene where you first see the reveal of that armor and it gets you pumped up and you're like holy shit this is Wonder Woman. Like, this is the moment that we've been waiting the entire movie for, and this is the buildup that we've been waiting for. In this film, we get Brie Larson scrolling through her RPG maker from Mass Effect and deciding what color she wants to wear. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. That's nice. yeah. Deciding what shader she's going to pick in her creative character outfit. <laughs> And I'm like, this is the most fucking boring way you could have introduced the iconic outfit. <laughs> it was sweet. Come on. You had the, the Monica there. Monica Rambo. Um, and actually, I, want, I wanted to speak about that, too. I'm kind of curious where they're going to take that, because if you know your comic book lore, Monica Rambo was the original Captain Marvel. She was the original character. Yep. So we have a young Monica Rambo who you would presume is probably in her 30s at this point in the MCU line. So is it because maybe... MCU, maybe the heads of Disney were like, well, let's kind of have an out just in case this doesn't work with Brie Larson or just in case this doesn't work with uh, with this version of the character or anything like that. We just have Monica Rambeau uh, waiting for us in the future and we could kind of go that route if we have to. Yeah. 
Because I personally would love to see a Monica Rambeau movie. I think we're going to get uh, uh, Kamala Khan first before. I could, see, ooh. I could see that. And in fact, I could see Kamala Khan being on their Disney streaming service before she was. Uh, oh, if those are thoughts. If there's ever a character that you can use from TV and upgrade to film, it's it's got to be Kamala for a Captain Marvel sequel or whatever. I, I think it's a golden Ms. opportunity. Marvel to exploit uh, you know, a character being in different mediums. I, I would love to see a uh, Miss Marvel movie. I would, I would love to see a Miss Marvel movie. So, um, you know what movie's a good movie? What movie? Lego okay. Movie Part 2. <laughs> I saw that this week at Alamo, and I love that movie. I want to see Batman Lego Movie now. Yeah, that has nothing to do with Captain Marvel. I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> so for those of you still watching, go see Lego Movie Part Two after you see Lego Movie Part One. Exactly. And uh, now I'm going to go see Lego uh, Movie Batman Movie. They they should hit the like button first before they leave. Right, and right. make sure if you need a book, a graphic novel. A collected edition, you get it from InStockTrades.com. Because while we've been talking about movies, they get these movie ideas from comic books. And to get your collected edition of comic books, you get them from InStockTrades.com, where you can get them for up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Every quarter, you get an Omnibros Live discount code. Currently, right now, Sunday, March. 10th of 2019, you can get 3% off everything in the system with the code RAWSHARK. It ends tonight <laughs> at midnight. That's right. Our boy Omar mispronounced Rorschach as RAWSHARK. They have a sense of humor there at IST. And you can get 3% off over $50 in an order. That gets you free shipping in the United States. And the best customer service possible, the best packaging possible. That's in stocktrades.com. We love them. <laughs> uh, okay. I love in stock trades. Uh, anything else? Oh, I have oh, Brie oh. Larson's acting coach here if anybody wants to take a crack at it. Piece <laughs> of wood? Yeah, it's her acting coach. Holy smoke. Man, you a hater. <laughs> I'm making Geo laugh, so it was totally worth it. <laughs> oh man, it's it, it, like it's just like she's a great actress. Obviously, no, she, she won awards, but I don't think this was the best material for her. I, I like several scenes. I'm like, oh, this is so cringeworthy. The lines and the I don't know. I just thought, like you said, uh, she was uh, she was probably miscast. I don't know. What do I know? Derek, no, she was stop. Lego 2 is good. Stop that. <laughs> Train your dragon 3. No one that wants to see that. Oh, Lego well, 2. The movies are good. What? Yeah. Good movies. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think tonally this thing's all over the place. Is it a buddy cop movie? Like, What, what is this supposed to be? Uh, they, Winter Soldier is a spy movie. Thor is a fish out of water movie. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, continue. Thor is a water movie. Captain America is a World War a World War II movie. They have what they are supposed to be. And this honestly feels more like a phase one movie in a point where this would have killed in phase one. People would have loved this in phase one. Mm -hmm. And we're now at a point where we've gotten the Winter Soldier, Infinity War, Civil War. We've gotten great and incredible films that have been put out. And the, the bar has been set and the bar is higher. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I really feel that this needed more time. It needed more time from a script standpoint, from just from the ground up, this really needed more time for them to work on it and to really nail this down because this is an important character. If that's what they're going to build their MCU on, this is a really important character. And I, I got almost none of that. The fight scenes for me were boring. There was no, there was no threat 
to her the entire film. I'm like, I, there was not one point where I thought, well, maybe she's in danger right now. And that's, that's part of the reason why I was so bored because she is really overpowered, yeah. but she, the, or so they claim because she is able to take care of all these guys. Just boom, boom, boom. She's just blasting shit. And there's never once in a film where I'm going, well, there's a threat here. Let me ask no, you a but, serious question. So this is serious. Mm -hmm. Is she, in your opinion, so um, is is her character so weak and uninteresting that she could be a fatal flaw for the MCU for the future? Now, if she is the most powerful character in the MCU now, and they're building their universe around her, could she be? Um, Fatal flaw for this universe now. So let me let me retrace what kind of what I just said. She's powerful in the sense in this film, because I know somebody's gonna call me out. She's powerful in the sense in this film that there was nothing that was a threat to her in this film. Mm -hmm. Again, but I haven't seen anything, like I mentioned earlier, where she's the most powerful being in the universe. They didn't show me that. Now on to your on to your question of is she a threat to the MCU not based on what I have seen in this film however if the rumors are to be true where oh she just has this ability that she can time travel that I hope the Russos aren't just gonna be able to pull out of their ass in the next film then that's where things start to get a little bit shaky for me because then you introduce the fact that she is just a living deus ex machina yeah where oh there's a problem that's going on mm -hmm. well yeah. we're still in spoilerville right oh yeah 100 percent. well i mean then here's a big spoiler that we're going to talk about so if you haven't seen the movie this is a huge spoiler that end credit scene she just shows up i hated that i, um, I and i don't know what the context is as far as what the timeline is in that but i'm sorry i'm sorry keep going well i mean she just shows up and yeah does, does she show up from 1995 or whenever or is she does she show up from 2019 when does she show up from is that time travel it's from a it's it's from that blockbuster radio shack whatever thing she made for fury so it seems like she showed up from 1995. She just shows up and says, where's Fury? Um, she just popped in from 1995. So <laughs> is she just going to pop back to three days earlier and punch Thanos in the nose? Oh, God. Um, then, well, the then that's going to be a 15-minute movie. The Russos have said that, no, it's not just Brie Larson and Captain Marvel that end up taking down Thanos. It's not that simple. So... I trust the Russos that they're not, it's not going to just be this whole simple, oh, she shows up and instantly kills Thanos and da da da, da and that's the end of it. I trust them that they're, they're creative enough and they're intelligent enough, God, I hope so, that they really just don't go out of this, uh, <clears throat> out of this whole thing. And yeah, I, it, it, that whole scene was just weird for me. Yeah. It was incredible. It was just weird. Like, so they're, this is the after the credit scene. So Tony, not Tony. So Steve Rogers is kind of just, you know, standing over there. You could see the counter of the people that are missing and they're trying to figure out who's gone and who got dusted and everything. And then you see the space beeper and it stops beeping. And then they're talking. And then all of a sudden she just shows up out of nowhere. And I'm like, guys, I really hope this isn't a character that just based on what the script wants, she can do whatever the hell she wants. I really fucking hope that's not the case. I think if they sh if they would have shot it differently, where yeah. the post credit scene was a little bit longer and you see her fly by and arriving, but it's like way too quick for its own good. I, I don't think it was a good post credit scene because, oh, no. what's gonna happen? Oh, where's Fury? Bam, it's over. It was yeah, a yeah, yeah. for a post credit scene. It was a bit too rushed. It was. It felt there. It, it's. It's just a cut and she's there and I'm like, everybody's clapping in the theater during this part and I'm like, why? That was, that was <laughs> why? Like, I'm the only one in the, in the theater going, no, what? that was horrible. <laughs> like the way it was cut, the way it was, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that frustrated me. I did like the other one with Goose. 
I like that one. Yeah, yeah that was funny. Here's a good question. Have you guys been able to leverage your Omnibros status to get any advanced tickets to any future films? Uh, here's what our Omnibros status gets us. The ability to use the word raw shark to get 3% <laughs> off uh, your books at instocktrades.com. Yeah, exactly. There that's, you go, guys. That's really it. See, and now I, I'm looking at people in the chat and they're doing mental gymnastics to try to justify all this stuff. Yeah. It, you know, show, don't tell. That's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, okay. Also, I mean, as far as... Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because I've been ranting for like the past 40 minutes. As far as where I would put this in the MCU, oh Thor the Dark World... Yeah. Thor the Dark World for me is still the worst one that I've seen. Followed by... I would say trying to go through the, them all in my head what iron man know? two and then this where do you rank iron man three somewhere in the middle because okay I, I, there are parts of iron man three that it's got a lot of issues but there are parts of iron man three that i really liked uh and okay so you didn't like thor two and that's still the worst thor two for me is still the worst of the films and but this is second worst third for me wait what's second worst iron man 2. oh iron man 2 okay because yeah, that was a big letdown for me okay of course i didn't hate that that was uh, the one with mickey rourke right yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 i like that one what were you gonna uh, say I, to want, you? I wanted to ask you guys because one of the things i felt that, uh, where the movie sort of felt a little bit flat is that there's not a real bad guy per se in this. Like you don't have like a true enemy. It's just, you know, she's fighting the system. Uh, that, that's sort of it. And with the character of Jan Rog, uh, I was mad because I was led to believe that Jude Law was going to play Marvel. And I was I so excited. So I wanted so that. Like, yeah, this is perfect casting. I really want to see Jude Laws. No, he's Jan Rog. Whatever. <laughs> and Annette Benning, bless bless her. She's great in all her movies and whatever. But here, you could have gotten somebody else because she. this was a paycheck movie for her because she did, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like... <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you got me for two days on set. That's it. Fuck y'all. I'm out of here. Yeah, I mean, really, there was no point in casting her. You should have gotten somebody else. I didn't mind the twist that you know Marvel's a a female character. I don't mind that at all. But she didn't really do anything. Uh, just sort of, she was there, and then she was cosplaying as the Supreme Intelligence, and then not. <laughs> Whatever. I'm so used to seeing the Supreme Intelligence being this. <laughs> <laughs> Modoc blobbering face that yeah. I'm like I like where it's going where everybody sees uh, the supreme intelligence differently that was a really cool yeah. idea and I, I don't know I just thought it was weak and and that you know she should have done something else I, I think that I think they could have gone many different ways with this whole movie I think you know there are so many different stories that they could have told and it, it's just a bland Captain Marvel story that they came yeah. up with and the way I see it, sorry, the, the way I see it is you have vignettes of different type of movies strung mm -hmm. together loosely by mm -hmm. Carol Danvers just going through the motions. It's a cosmic yeah. movie, then it's a buddy cop Terminator-esque movie, and then it's uh, a revenge movie, and then it's something else. And the individual scenes look great. There are several aspects that I really like, like the... Uh, uh, Captain Marvel trying to escape when she's bound by the scrolls and all that stuff. That was really cool. And then the Earth stuff in California. But, like, the connective tissue isn't as strong as they make it out to be compared to something like a, a, or a Wonder Woman or a Black Panther or whatever. Uh, so I thought, you know, that connective tissue might could have been a little bit stronger. I agree. I agree. I, like, I just I think that they could have, from the again from the most basic standpoint from the script i think they could have gone a different route with this carol danvers is a character that has been violated oh yeah like 
in, in, they could have gone that route. They could have dealt with PTS. There, there's so many different routes that they could have taken with this film to show me that not only is she strong physically, but she's also a strong female character. Other than her fighting a bunch of guys, that, that, that doesn't show me she's a strong emotional or a strong character in general. There's a difference between being physically strong and being a well-rounded, strong character. Um, and a few flashback scenes where guys are being assholes to her and telling her, you know, oh, you can't do this. That that doesn't bring me in necessarily. And my girl had the same problem with this where she said, yeah, a few flashback scenes for a few seconds of men telling her, oh, you can't do this. That's not enough. That's that. It's a few seconds. Like it's a blink and you miss it, and that's it. That's that's about as much character development as they did with her in this film. Yeah. Hey, um, I have an opinion. Hey guys, do y'all think we'll get a Hillbilly Library Edition or Omni? Hillbilly is so. on his Albatross. It's put out by Eric Powell himself, I think. Albatross. Um so it's not put out by Dark Horse. It's put out by him. So I think the best thing to do is write him at albatrossfunnybooks.com and ask him, because it's going to depend on sales of the trade paperback, whether or not he's going to put it out in oversized hardcover. I need to read that. Yeah, I do too. I've got three volumes of it. And this would be a perfect week for me to read this. Because I'm in a good mood. I feel like I'm going to be in a good mood the whole week. <laughs> Even uh, though you both of you guys are trying to harsh my buzz. <laughs> uh, all right. We've been kind of long on this. Yeah, we've we'll almost gone this. two hours. You want to put this to bed already? Uh, Gio, what was your final score? Uh, 6.5, although I kind of want to change it to a 7. Just a 7? I thought you were going to drop it to a 5. No, no. I mean, I'm being too harsh. I want to be nice. I'm a nice guy. So, so. <laughs> you're not talking nice about it. <laughs> I, I just, I like, I don't want people to think I'm bashing on it and like, oh, look at this sexist asshole talk about Captain Marvel. What is he? You know, no, I wanted to see a good, a good <laughs> superhero movie because I like the character and I wanted to see the best of the best. And I don't think. The movie delivers on that part. It it had glimmers of that, but I don't know. It could have been better. That's fair. Jess, uh, I give it an eight point oh. I I loved it from beginning to end, beginning, middle, end. Kept my interest, and I uh, walked out very happy, and spilled mustard on my shirt because I couldn't <laughs> take my <laughs> eyes off the screen. <laughs> Uh, well, you guys, four point five, and I'm I'm even I'm being generous with that. I, yeah, you are being generous from what it sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, this it, again, it did nothing for me. It bored me. There's some serious problems here. I'm seeing people in the chat even now doing mental gymnastics to justify some really poor choices. I think that they made in this film doesn't really have a tone. Doesn't really have a set universe. Carol Danvers is acting coach is right here, and we saw how that worked out well. Um, I, I did, it did nothing for me. I'm sorry. And a few little scenes where men were being assholes to her really just, it didn't pull me in and it didn't really make me sympathetic or really make me care for this character. I'm hoping next month with the Russo brothers, who I think I, I know they're stronger filmmakers, uh, than what we got here. Um, I, I, I hope that they're able to turn around because if this is where the MCU is heading is lynching, uh, that's poor choice of words. This, yeah, this is, is where true. MCU is putting their pin for her to be the center of the universe of moving forward after Chris Evans takes leave. I don't see it. I, I, I really don't see it. And this, I'm somebody who I am admittingly getting burned out on all these superhero films. And this was exactly what I thought it was going to be. I hate to tell you this, but I turned off the broadcast like 45 minutes ago. You've been talking to nothingness for 45 you minutes. Can say that. <laughs> before we go, before we go. Sorry, sorry. If everybody wants to see a good Captain Marvel, uh, watch uh, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the animated series. Mm -hmm. They have a whole segment, like a couple episodes dedicated.
complicated. Jennifer Hale does an amazing job as Carol. They introduce Jan Rog, Ronan. They they do the Cap uh, the Marvel stuff. It's similar to the movie, but totally different at the same time. Easily my favorite interpretation of the character in a medium besides comic books. So watch that one. Yay! So I need to check that yeah, out. That's all I. Need I need to... You've been talking about that for a while. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, we've had a, an, an enormous amount of opinions uh, <laughs> spewing forth today from everyone, from the chat, but we kept it respectful. There was um, not a lot of animosity. Um, there were a couple of little, little twinges of animosity, but it was mostly respectful. <laughs> um, of course, uh, Brie Larson's acting coach did make an appearance. Um, <laughs> that uh, that verged on the unbecoming, but uh, what the hell? So, Luis, where can they find you uh, when you're not cradling a piece of wood in your hands? <laughs> you can find me at Comics Guy 101 on Facebook and Twitter. And Gio, where can they find you, you pop culture nerd king, you? Oh, gosh. They can find me at A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Just subscribe there, and you'll see more of this face. <laughs> and you can find me, Omnidog, and Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidog's underscore vault. And thank you to the chat. You were wonderful today. Uh, got a lot of viewers and a lot of chatters. We appreciate it. We will see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time when we do hauls, previews, and reads. Thank you to everyone. Peace and love. Peace and love. Good night, everyone. Bye.